Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in. In today's video, we're going to be doing a little experiment. As most of you know, a lot of times you get one of these cheap, no-name China powercom cables uh, when you order lights from China. And uh, I've had some where the cable just pulled straight out of the connector because they were assembled very poorly. Um, and then I noticed that the strands in the wires inside, they were really thin. And then I looked at the cable and if you can see this, uh, they are three times 0 0.75 uh, millimeter squared, which means they are, uh, if you follow the European regulation, they are only good for 6 amps. And out of a normal plug socket, you can uh, pull 16, or in the event sector many times, even uh, 20 amps. And the problem is, those cables are supplied with cheap lights that most of the time don't um, pull much power. But on many devices, including those cheap lights, you have a uh, power con in and a power con out. And these are meant to daisy chain multiple lights um, to each other. So you can put the power in, power out to the next light, power in, power out. And this means you can very easily um, exceed the 6 amps that those cables are rated for. So today I wanted to conduct a little experiment where I have this amp meter and I have this um, plug socket connected to the outlet of that power con cable so we can pull as much power as we want to that cable because um, in the scenario where you have multiple lights daisy chain to each other you can always pull up to 16 amps or whatever the plug socket you plug it into is um, uh, rated for which most cases is 16 amps so we have a 16 amp breaker which means that we cannot do anything um, that wouldn't be uh, achievable in a normal scenario. On the outlet of the power con connector, we have connected this uh, power strip, which has uh, two Kaiser fog machines, two 300 watt power cans, one 500 watt um, heater connected, and those are 1.5 kilowatt each. So we can easily reach the 16 amps uh, that you are allowed to pull from a plug socket or a normal power con lead. So now we can check what really happens when we pull the full 16 amps to one of these cheap Chinese power con leads. Um, I suspect there will be a little bit of melting, maybe even some flames. So yeah, let's get started. Also, here is a little voltmeter which shows the uh, voltage at the end of the power con lead. So because the lead will probably be heating up, this means we will be losing voltage in the lead. And this will show us how much the voltage is uh, dropping where the devices are connected. So as you can see, the two fog machines are on, two 300 watt power cans are on, and the 500 watt heater is on. All to this cheap Chinese power con lead which for now is not really melting or uh, giving us any fire show. So yeah, that's actually a good sign because it's now about running two or three times above its uh, rated power. Oof, but it's getting quite, quite hot now. The voltage has dropped even more, so it's now at showing less than or equal to 195 volts. So we are losing quite a bit of voltage in that cable, which means that it's heating up quite a lot as well. But the 16M breaker is still holding on, so we are not doing anything that wouldn't be achievable uh, normally with this cable. Oh yeah, the fog machines have heated up so we are losing uh, a lot of our current now. Hmm. Didn't quite think about that. Um, I'll be back. <laughs> okay, so small change of plans. I have imported some extra power in the form of our kitchen kettle. Um, and I now only have one fog machine connected 
and I can switch between the two fog machines so one can cool off while the other one is heating uh, so we won't have the same problem as last time that when they heat up they start, uh, they stop pulling current so yeah cool, let's continue our experiment and let's see what happens so we are just going to keep going until the breaker pops or until the cable gives up So the heater is still on, currently pulling about 5 amps, so let's turn on the kettle and let's see what happens. Ok, the voltage dropped to 210 volts, at about 12 amps going through this cable, which is only rated for 6 amps. Ok, so let's turn on the geyser as well. Everything is still running. Again, at about 16 amps, we dropped to 205 volts. Hmm. I think we're going to have to connect the second geyser as well to get to our uh, full potential. Let me grab a liter real quick. Okay, so I've grabbed another lead so we can continue our experiment. So let's turn everything on again. Currently at about 16 amps still. So let's plug in the second geyser. And maybe we'll see the lights dim as well because there is so much voltage drop in the cable. Okay, so now pulling about 20 amps, which is normal for these breakers, they are uh, designed to accept a bit more uh, than their rating, but only for a certain time. So let's keep going and see what happens. Okay, so our cable is getting very hot and I'm starting to smell something very stinky as well. So let's keep going and let's see what happens. The breaker is still holding on, even though that we're pulling quite a lot more than what it's rated for, which is again normal for these breakers. Wow, this is actually surprising me. I would have suspected that we would have had smoke already. Oh, I'm seeing a little bit of smoke. Something smoking. I think it's a cable. Yep, we're starting to get some smoke. Cable is smoking, guys. There's also a cake forming in the lead. I'm going to put the camera on the stand so that I have my hands free if something happens. Quite a lot of smoke. The entire jacket of the cable is melting. Still not pulling anything that you aren't allowed to pull from a normal plug socket, so we are doing nothing that isn't possible in a normal scenario with these scales. Poor that stinks. <laughs> Yep, this cable is not happy.
I'm surprised that we didn't have any sparks yet. Still pulling about 20 amps. And in some cases, some sockets are even uh, fused at 20 amps. So this means that you can pull, pull even more than 20 amps out of them. So this isn't even the worst case scenario yet. Okay, so we have already dropped back to 10 amps because one of the fog machines heated up and the kettle is almost ready. But what I think I'm going to do is just grab um, six fog machines so we can have three of them plugged in at all times. Um, so we can switch them when one set has heated up and then we can allow them to cool and switch them again. Uh, and then, yeah, let's see if we can finish this cable uh, or let's see if we can pop this breaker and what will happen. But let me unplug this real quick. But right now the cable really is not looking good. It is very toasty and uh, burnt in some places. Poof, and very, very stinky. <coughs> so yeah, let's keep going and let's see what happens. Okay, so change of plans once again. We've got four geysers. Two Parkins, one 500 watt heater and one heater that I don't really know how many watts it is but it's very old and it pulls about 9 amps, I just checked. So I'm now pretty sure that we can have something go pop. It will either be the cable or the breaker. And uh, yeah, so let's continue and uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, our cable is definitely not happy. The entire cable is smoking. <coughs> but it's holding on and it has for quite a while, so I think we should add a little bit more power. And uh, let's see if we can pop the breaker or uh, finish this cable because it's now starting to smoke quite a lot. Yep, not a happy cable. And the current has dropped again, so it's time to switch one of the fog machines. So back at 20 amps and uh, let's squeeze it a little bit more. Oof, almost 30 amps. I'm su suspecting that the breaker will pop anytime soon now and the cable is definitely not happy. Okay, so the cable failed and the breaker did its work and it popped. So I think what actually happened is that the shielding melted and that two wires touched each other and uh, yeah, it just gave a complete short circuit and uh, yeah, this exceeded the current of this breaker which made it trip. Okay, so let's unplug it. And uh, let's let it uh, cool down for a bit and then we can have a look at what this cable suffered during this test because it isn't looking very good. Sorry. Okay, so let's have a look at the damage. So 
this is our power cone lead, which funnily enough on the uh, on the connector, I don't know if you can see this if the camera wants to focus, but it's rated for 20 amps, <laughs> which uh, as you can see is certainly not the case. So we have many parts of the cable that have totally melted and the insulation has also come of the internal wires as well and it's also not very flexible anymore it's very stiff and crusty so yeah it's melted completely through on multiple locations So yeah, I would say that if you've got some of these cheap power comb leads, I would you can use them, but I would only use them with one light or uh, a few lights, but definitely not a complete uh, power circuit worth of lights, because you just saw what can happen. Um, they are not happy when you run the full rated current of uh, a plug circuit to them. So yeah. Be aware of this and then uh, you should be fine. Take anything you saw in this video uh, only as advice. I'm not responsible if you burn down your house or your venue um, by trying anything of this because uh, the setup as well, it wasn't completely safe. Uh, you have to know a little bit what you're doing to be able to try something like this safely. Yeah, you can just totally see the copper of the of the wire exposed because all the insulating has completely melted through not good <laughs> and yeah one thing um, if some of you wonder why the breaker was rated for 16 amps but it didn't pop well it was just a normal household breaker and uh, these come with a graph uh, if you look up the documentation I will see if I can put something uh, on screen now to explain it better but there's also there's always a relationship between the amount of amps that you go over the threshold which in this case was 16 amps and how long you go over it so you can pull let's say I'm just making numbers up now if you have a 16 amp breaker if you have a 16 amp breaker you can for example pull 20 amps for 15 minutes 30 amps for 5 minutes and it will instantly pop at 50 amps, for example. Um, that's most of the times how it goes, not with these numbers, but something like that. So that's why we can, uh, that, so that's why we saw about 20 and even 30 amps going through this breaker, which was also going through the breaker inside the house, and it didn't pop, which is normal. So I can now finally throw this cable in the trash where it belongs. I have some uh, future silly experiments coming up and also some other sound and light related stuff. Uh, so if you want to see that, please consider subscribing and uh, yeah, take care.